Hey, what's up guys? I've got an exciting new Mogur to share with you. It's actually an update of an earlier Mogur that I've done. It is version two of the smooth motion Mogur I did a while back. This one is all about giving you the Ken Burns effect. That is to say, smooth zooms and pans as quickly and automatically as possible. It's dynamic, it's customizable, and there's no keyframes. Let's check it out. First off, if you've never used a Mogur before, all the action takes place in the Essential Graphics panel. You're going to go over to your Browse tab. On this bottom right, there's an icon where it says Install Motion Graphics Template. You will click that, find the file wherever it might be on your computer, wherever you downloaded it, and from there it should pop up. And you can just drag and drop. And then we've got our settings here in the Essential Graphics panel. This is a placeholder graphic. Uh, I've got a couple stock images that I just pulled from the internet. I will just pass one of these in. Uh, to the template for demonstration. Uh, the way it works, this spot where it says image, that's where the placeholders are swapped out. So you'll just take your media from the project panel and literally just drag and drop over that section. And then all of a sudden that image pops in. So as you can see by default, the image automatically scales to fill the frame. Without doing anything, we've got a smooth Ken Burn style zoom in animation, no keyframing, no nothing. If we extend the duration of the clip out, then that animation will go throughout the entire new duration, just appear a little bit slower. We've also got zoom out. Motion amount is set to 20, so we're basically starting at 120%. And over the course of this animation, we will return to uh, 100%. So it's a minus 20% scale animation to wherever you move the endpoint and outpoint. Um, motion amount is, well, I said 20% just now, you can make that 60. So now over the course of this duration, it's going to zoom in, or in this case, zoom out uh, 62%. So it's the equivalent of a 162 scale endpoint to a 100% outpoint, uh, if you were to do that manually. Uh, similarly, we've got pan left, which is just a panning to the left and pan right. Everything, as you can see, automatically adjusts, automatically scales, so you're panning accordingly. Um, now, you will see that uh, her head's cut off. That's The reason for that is simple. These presets are very, very rudimentary. So zoom in is just zooming into the center point. Zoom out, zooming out from the center point. Pan left and right, they're basically centering the images adjusted so that the image doesn't ever go off screen, but it basically it's it doesn't give you that granular control to pan onto a specific part of the picture, for example, such as her face. If you want to change that, this is one of the new features of this uh, version two, that would be under custom. Uh, once you set it to custom, you can go down into the advanced tab, custom motion. And now these controls here are overriding the motion amount control here. Uh, they work a little differently. We'll, you'll see zoom is set to zero, pan X and Y are also set to zero, but let's say we wanted to do a zoom in onto her face. Uh, we could set the zoom to, we'll do 80%, um, play that. And again, we're getting that 80% zoom in as if we did set it to 80 up here. And it's just zooming in to the center. Now, to change that, we'll go to our last frame. And now we can adjust the pan X and Y to find a good endpoint. I will say, we'll have a go to there. So now over the course of this animation, it will end on that frame we just set. And now you can see it zooms in accordingly. Uh, let's try a different example. We'll switch over to a different photo altogether, drop that in. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna delete everything so we get, start totally from scratch. Um, take this photo. We've got a photo of a dog here. And as you can see, it is scaling to fill the frame. That looks a little bizarre because this is a 16 by nine sequence and our stock image here is uh, it's two by three. It's more of a vertical orientation. So let's go up into this top image tab. We can open that up and it's set to scale to fill. And that means when you drop any media into this, before it even gets into the Mogurt, so to speak, it's gonna fill the frame. It's gonna automatically fill the frame. So what is even input into the Mogurt itself is already appearing full frame. Usually that's the option you're gonna want for just quick down and dirty settings without having to futz with the controls too much. But we can switch it to scale to fit as well. And you can see the image automatically scales to fit in the frame instead of fill it. Um, now here's where it gets kind of interesting. You notice down here, we've got something called background scale. You can kind of see it on the edges here, but there is a background. Um, there are two instances of your image rendering in this image. 
So just with a simple slider, we're getting automatic blurred background with parallax motion. So while your foreground photo is zooming in 20% over the course of this animation, your background is actually animating as well. And if we want to get into kind of the advanced settings to control the background, we go into advanced, into background. Here's the settings that control the background. So blur is set to 50 if you want to get even blurrier. There you go, you just dial that up. The reason this is animating slower to your eye than the foreground is because of this parallax motion setting. So this is the setting 0 to 100. If you set it to 0, uh, it will not move at all. That is static. If you set it to 100, it will scale 1 to 1 with the foreground. So it won't appear to be at a different speed at all. Um, so you can kind of see they're kind of moving together. And for the parallax effect, that's basically anything between 0 and 100. Um, so I have it set by default to 20, but you can set it to whatever you want. In this case, we'll just show 50. And it's hard to see when you're actually playing it in real time, but when you kind of scrub through, you can see that the foreground is zooming differently than the background. Pretty cool effect, and it's especially cool because you don't have to do anything to get it. Just scale your background up, or alternatively, you can scale your foreground down. Uh, there's an option here to also add a drop shadow to this drop shadows in general. Um, change the color to whatever you want, but probably you're just going to leave it like that. So yeah, that's pretty good. You get the idea. It's kind of a Ken Burnsy slideshow effect, and you don't really have to do much to get it. As much as possible, this is done automatically for you. Let's try a new example. We'll go into a vertical sequence and show you the other half of this Mogert package, because it is actually two Mogerts, not one. One is primed for vertical and one is primed for 16 by 9, but they are effectively the same thing. So let's try this photo, drag that over. So yeah, this one looks like it's also about two by three. Um, vertical landscape. Let's just quickly throw together some kind of animation. We'll do a custom, let's do a custom movement here. Um, we'll do a little bit of a zoom. So again, we'll go to that last frame. I don't want the zoom to kind of just go, go down that road. All right, play that. And there we go. It kind of looks like a, almost like one of those Lord of the Rings fellowship kind of shots. And now we've got this zoom down the center of the barrel pretty much, orienting the eye towards the end of that road. Uh, I'm going to drop the zoom actually a bit. Aha, so see, I dropped the zoom and now we're, we've revealed the uh, the background underneath. We can switch it off. We don't want that. And that will render transparently if you, for example, export it in ProRes 4444. Um, but in this case, uh, I'm going to scale the foreground up here. Yes, yeah, so it's kind of a weird effect, but it's more just to show what you can do. Um, so let's say we wanted to zoom out instead. That's easy. You just click this checkbox and it reverses the motion. And now all of a sudden you zoom out from that zoomed in position. Uh, what else? Easy ease. Uh, let's get a new one in again for the sake of example. Get a fresh template there. All right, this one is, this one's a little more of a widescreen. Okay, so we've got this lady, lady in the water looking out over the sunset. Um, this is a good example I can demonstrate. Um, again, we're on scale to fill here. So this is a widescreen image, image scaling and cropping a lot to fit on this screen. If we sh drop it to scale to fit, you'll, that's what it wants to be. That's like what the native resolution is of this image. Um, we can drop the scale down and then now we've got that blurred background look, scale the background up. Okay, now we're, we've are we filled the frame with this a zoom in that will zoom 20% over the course of five seconds and we're done. If that's all you want, you're done. As demonstrated before, we can add some drop shadow in there. And I'm gonna actually scale the foreground up. I kind of want it to be that full frame. And so yeah, there's one way to do this. Another way, um, we can go back to scale to fill. And from here, we can scale down the foreground. Aha, now do you see what's happened? So this is just the difference between scale to fill and scale to fit. Like I said, scale to fill is going to auto-fill the image so it fills the entire frame before even sending it into the Mogert. 
so to speak before you like under the hood of this mogurt is an after effects composition um so it's basically sending a cropped full frame image into the after effects composition which means that the left and right of this image don't even exist so for for the sake of the mogurt and you know the 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 processing that it's doing under the hood it's not even it doesn't even know that the image actually has more on the left and right. This is all you get. This is all you have to work with. And that might be all you want for this kind of look, which, you know, this scaled down 16 by 9, it's certainly more tuned for uh, the vertical format. It might be what you want. So if you do want to get just quick access to this sort of slideshow, foreground, and background look, maybe we kill the drop shadow and, you know, raise the blur up a lot. Uh, if that's something that you want, you can easily get that just by switching over scale to fit over to scale to fill. And then we get that. And we want it, let's say we want it to last for 15 seconds. Now we've got a real slow zoom that's going to take place over 15 seconds. Um, let's do one last example. Um, the one setting I haven't showed you is under custom motion. Motion duration. So what is this? In the free version of the tempo, there's actually a slider for duration, but I realize you don't need this because we can set it so the duration is decided by the end of the clip, which is much more convenient. So that's the way it is now. What this is actually referring to in this custom motion duration setting is it's a zero to 100 percentage-based slider. At 100, that means the animation will end 100% of the way through the clip, i.e. on the last frame. When you hit that last frame, the animation will end. That's 100%. Now, if you drop this down to 50, that same animation will now end around here, 50% of the way through this clip that we've created. So let's watch that, and you can see. This is about a 10 sec or 15-second clip. So around second 7, it should stop animating. And there you go. It stopped animating. So... It's not precise in the sense that like you can type in, you know, the frame that you want, but you can't just generally say where you want this animation to end and it will end there. So now it's 25% of the way through this clip and there we go, 25% of the way through, it stops. Let's say I shorten this clip. Now it's only a seven second clip, so it should stop around just around two seconds. And there we go, it stopped. So every, as you can see, everything dynamically updates based on not an exact frame, but a relative zero to 100 percentile. Let me know if you like the way that works for the sake of having totally responsive Mogurt like this, or just drag and everything kind of live updates. Uh, I find this is a good way to do it, um, but maybe we're, there's iterations in the future to improve. For most things, you just want to leave this at 100 though, so it will the animation will last throughout the entire duration of the clip think that is pretty much it. You can check out this Mogurt on Gumroad, videowizard.gumroad.com. Link is also in the description. Yeah, I'd love to hear what you think, uh, what you like, dislike, and yeah, if there's anything that I can tweak and change, make it better moving forward, let me know. I will, I will do that. Uh, thank you for checking this out, and I'll see you on the next one.